five years ago, I left a perfectly fine job at a Fortune 100 company to start my own company. I spent a year trying to do just that, but I failed miserably. So the biggest lesson learned in that process was that I failed to leverage the value of my networks. I did not reach out early enough in this process to potential customers, investors, mentors, and experts in the field to validate the feasibility of my idea. A year later, I was at a crossroads. Should I go back and find a job? Or should I continue chasing my dream of entrepreneurship? So, one morning, as I was sitting there, literally twiddling my thumbs, thinking about my next move, a former colleague reached out to me and invited me to attend a local STEM education event. I was not too keen on attending, but I had nothing else to do anyway, so I went. And I was 15 minutes late. You know the worst thing that can happen when you're 15 minutes late? You walk into the room, the presenter stops talking, and points to me and says, you there who just walked in late, come on up here to table number one. We have an empty seat. I was completely embarrassed. As I made my walk of shame to table one, the whole room stared at me. So at table one was Pam, a local high school teacher, Kent, general manager at a Fortune 100 company, and Sam, who was a district leader at a large local school district. We had a productive day discussing the importance of connecting students with industry professionals and the barriers that school districts face in making that happen at scale. So the same night, when I returned back from the STEM event, my mind started racing about the possibilities. At 11 p.m. at night, I drove to my co-founder's house, and the same night, we came up with the idea for Nepris, a first-of-its-kind cloud-based platform that helps connect industry professionals virtually into classrooms to bring real-world relevance and career exposure to students. Today, we've connected over 300,000 students with professionals from nearly 5,000 companies, and we're growing rapidly. Pam became the very first teacher to use Nepris. Kent became an early investor in the company, and Sam helped sign the very first district-wide contract that helped, helped us acquire thousands of customers in year one. So my walk of shame to table one turned out to be the biggest opportunity of my life. So when Pam, so I think about this and I think that did I just get lucky? Was this all just a coincidence? Was I at the right place at the right time? But when I look back, there were so many intentional actions I had taken that led to a lot of these positive outcomes. The very next day, I reached out to Pam, and I asked if I can come by and observe her class. I spent days and weeks in her classroom, taking notes and understanding the real barriers of connecting industry and education. I reached out to Kent and set up many meetings with him to talk about business and leadership. Sam introduced me to his wife, who was a leader in the education industry, who later became an advisor to Nepris. So when all of these people decided to get involved with my company, they were not just acquaintances anymore. They were part of my trusted inner circle. And this was no mere coincidence. For the very first time, I realized the value of cultivating relationships. 
You see, I grew up on a coconut farm in South India. At the age of five, I was sent to a boarding school because that's the only way I could get a good education. My connections were very limited to the farm and the boarding school. My inherited network, the network that I'm born with, was very narrow. So in my journey from rural India to corporate America, it's been dotted with people, places, and experiences that has helped me grow my network. But most importantly, how do you actually create value in this network? It's not just about growing the network, but how do we create value? So there's decades of research that point to the value of strong tie and weak tie networks. So your strong ties are your close family and friends. This is a small group. Whereas when you look at your weak ties, these are people that you run into, you may or may not keep in touch with. They may be your colleagues, people that you meet at conferences. When I had to shut down my first company, the person I turned to for moral support was my husband. And one time, when a well-meaning investor suggested that I bring along my male co-founder so I can get better credibility, I was furious. It was my best friend that I turned to to share my frustration. So these people in my strong tie networks have been a pillar of support in my professional journey. But what I've realized is these people in my weak tie networks are the ones that have connected me to opportunities that has helped me grow my company. The sociologist Mark Granovetter concluded that there is so much value in your weak tie networks that help connect you to people and information that go beyond your confined strong ties that can help you grow quickly. He says that people with fewer weak ties are at a real disadvantage. So should we all just hurry up and add more people to our LinkedIn and Facebook networks overnight? Well, that could be a start, but that's not gonna get you anywhere. The difficult part is understanding how do you create value within this weak tie network? How do you build your inner circle within this network? So let's take a simple day-to-day -day example. We all go to conferences, right? We come back with a stack of business cards. Each of those cards is a weak tie connection. We all have good intentions, but what happens is those stack of cards end up on my desk for a week, and later it just moves to my first drawer, and then eventually it just disappears. I mean, we all know what, what you know, this experience is. Finally, we, we lose this opportunity to really leverage those connections. So today, I make it a point when I come back from an event Within a day or two, I go through my stack of cards and pick just a few people out of that to reach out. I reach out and set up a meeting. I share something relevant with them. I start creating value within my network. Today, we live in a digital world. There are over 2.5 billion social media users. So it's only natural that most of our weak ties exist online. So it's as simple as liking someone's post or sharing their article or just congratulating someone on their recent accomplishment to start creating value. So if I hadn't reached out to Pam, Kent, or Sam after that STEM event, we may not have grown so fast in year one. 
If I hadn't attended the STEM education event, NEPRIS may not exist today. And I wouldn't have attended the event if it wasn't for my former colleague, who was a weak tie connection. And this was no coincidence either. It's been years since we worked together, but I had always kept in touch. Whenever I was in town, I would reach out for a coffee meeting. I would introduce him to other people in my network when I thought there were synergies. So when the opportunity for the STEM event came across his desk, he immediately thought of me because I was already in his radar. So this was no mere coincidence either. So as a company, we were growing, and it was time for me to raise the first round of funding. And I had no clue how to go about doing this. I had reached out to my contacts, set up a meeting with a leading investor in the Bay Area, showed up with my carefully crafted pitch deck. I was completely disappointed when they politely refused to invest. But the very next day, I reached out to one of the investors and I said, could you take some time to give me some feedback? What could I have done better? Where are the gaps? What should I do to improve? She was more than happy to take the time to give me feedback. I told her that while I had product and industry knowledge, I needed help with financial and business models. She introduced me to other entrepreneurs who had gone through this process. She became a valuable guide in helping me navigate this fundraising process. A year later, the same firm decided to invest in my company, and I asked her what changed her mind. And she said, it was because I was not afraid to ask for help. And the fact that I was diligent in following through. Sometimes, as project leaders, as entrepreneurs, we're under a lot of stress and pressure to hide our fears and to feign confidence. But that can work against us. When you're vulnerable, you open yourself up to true connection. You start to attract people who are inspired by your openness. Being vulnerable can go a long way in creating authentic connections within your network. Lastly, building valuable relationships is all about human connection. In my mother tongue Tamil, when a guest is about to leave, we don't just say goodbye. We say poi tu anga, meaning please come back. This slight change in how you use language to communicate with your network can go a long way in changing a transaction into a real human connection. So Tanya Mainin, in her talk on strategies to widen your social universe, puts this really eloquently. She says, reach out to people as partners, not as resources. So in my professional journey, the most valuable network I have ever built is that of my peer network, other entrepreneurs and founders. I have learned empathy from this group. Today, when I run into a fellow founder and they're vulnerable enough to share their recent setback with me, I don't just say I'm sorry. Instead, I say, I know exactly what you're going through. I was exactly at the same place last year. I know you will get through it or maybe what can I do to help? Immediately, I see the relief in their eyes, and you form a true and lasting bond. Many of us come from very strong product backgrounds, and we put a lot of emphasis on developing the perfect product. Of course, you need to have a stellar product that's the foundation of any business. But don't forget that it's the value that you create in your connections 
and building your network and cultivating those relationships that go a long way in helping you grow your business quickly. There is hidden value in your weak tie networks that can only be leveraged if you're willing to reach out, connect, cultivate these relationships, and be open to being vulnerable. Today, when you leave this room, I challenge each and every one of you to take a few minutes to look through your connections. Find three or four people that you want to reach out to. Start cultivating these relationships. Set up a meeting. Ask for their feedback or advice. Most importantly, think about what you can do for them, not just what they can do for you. Start building your inner circle. Before you know it, you won't just be growing professionally, but you will be growing personally as well. Thank you.